hasn't been painful. It was just slope intercept form. Okay, so it is Friday. So on Fridays, uh, all I do is collect the homework. Uh, there is your homework. Why is that not? Oh, there it goes. So all I do is collect the homework. I do ask questions and then we move on. Uh, by the way, if that was as painful as for you as it was for me, the assembly, we got what, one more left, I think, maybe two. It was terrible. It just kept I know. Uh, next year, uh, we're doing upper school assemblies, um, not a combined assembly. We might do a combined assembly once a month or something like that, but the other ones will be upper school. So you guys, since you're the upper school, you guys are you guys are going to get treated very well because <laughs> because you're it's like you're going to be a senior every single year. So it was like the uh, last night the teachers we were talking about the um, the uh, final schedule and uh, we were saying, oh, that's really cool. Let's let the seniors pick their final schedules every single time. So you guys, whatever you told Mrs. Uh, Newburn, that's going to be the final schedule. I'm yes. 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 And sure you're going to be like, able to do that every single year because you were always the seniors. So Dude, whatever. Dude, you're the you guys will get to pick the, the, the final. We're wow. going to say that seniors, because the they're the seniors, they get to pick the final way. schedule. Woo! I feel so much for you. Right. Why are we trying finals? But I'm also going to make seniors run, the, and that's you guys next year. Not that you're seniors, but I'm gonna make you guys run. You guys run the assemblies for upper school. Like you, oh, okay, so Wait, it's are not there happening. Any... There's no more assemblies. We're gonna have dance on so, every happening. single day, and, and that might be something that we do. I but mean, what it, we all would do is say there's no assemblies. But we're gonna tomorrow. I don't know, not tomorrow, but uh, next year we'll we'll get a select number of you. We'll come together, put our heads together, what we want the assemblies look like. But it's gonna be yeah, 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 you have like a mini concert. Okay, for the record, no, I thought that too. The idea is that have the last make a, like an assemblies. arena type deal, right? right? And everybody gets a sword. No, not everybody. It's like oh, two, problems, one two problem children, and we make them fight to the death. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Because yes. they just turn everyone. We will make them fight. Well, well, I will fight. say, oh, in my burns, in my high school, burns. we did a similar thing, except it wasn't with swords; it was with non-lethal things. But uh, oh, we did we did pubal sticks a couple times. You know what that is? Everybody gets dressed up in this, you know, you get a boxer thing over your head and you get, the, gets a free and then you get these box. big sticks that have pads oh, on it. Yeah, yeah. And we literally was like, okay, these, it would be like junior, senior, like juniors yeah, would like fight the, the seniors or something like that. And they would, li it would literally be a fight. So but I mean, it was not, people didn't get hurt or anything like that, but, oh, 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 but we didn't so assemble like that. that. So wait, can we seriously like have a radical dude assembly where every Friday you pick the student with the worst grades and the second worst grades? And have them put them together, like from each. That would be a little yes. bit of stigmatizing, wouldn't it? Well, no, 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 no. Here's the thing: we'll just say that they're randomly selected. We could yeah, pick we, champions like, of the like. We could. I, I'm all like, for pick that. The best people and have them as as You guys have seen the like the big no. sumo costume things, the blow up <laughs> oh, ones. Yes, we yes. do that. Foam swords and wacky. That would be cool. Uh, All right. No, we should do the sumo thing. I will yeah. run out of time if we get too off track here, but um, wait, hold on. Micah has a suggestion. No, okay. um, but yes, I will be relying on you guys to come up with most of the ideas for a set. Now we are still have to do LTA stuff, right? Like, There'll have to be some format, but I, I definitely want it to be more what it was when I went to high school, which was so, it was uh, uh, we did assemblies not every Friday, but most Fridays. And it was always, well, it was either pep rally uh, focused. Uh, it was a little bit of information put out type thing. Sometimes there were special events, like they got a, you know, a so band and they, we just listened to a concert, recite, that sort of thing. Something you have to recite a poem from like the 1700s. And there and might be poetry. occasional poetry thrown in there, right? But I'm yeah, saying it, it should be, it should be a, a normal high school assembly. Yeah. Because we have to do like school oh stuff, how is this? So we have Mr. Brew here give a speech on like gladiatorial combat or something. Right. And then we get a demonstration of who is real perfect. lions, real that is perfect. and real gladiators, okay, that have to fight to the death with real blood, real death, everything. Yeah, real yeah, awesome. You were pretty good for the first part of the sentence. The rest of it was probably not. But the first part I like. Okay. Well, we All right. Bring a bunch of like Write this down. I'm going to really run out of time here. All right.
So this is the second part, and it's really this part right here, 25 through 30. The five through six, you're gonna knock out in five seconds, but the 25 through 30 is what we'll spend the most of the time on today. Now I've got plenty of examples. We probably won't get through all of them or even half of them, but I have plenty of examples here. Uh, it is also something that you already did in uh, Algebra 1. So this is, there's nothing new today. Um, but yes. it is the superior. geometry where we, we said that the last half of this chapter was we proved all the things that we did in Algebra 1 because we never proved anything in Algebra 1. Uh, 25 to 30, some of these are quicker than others, but most of them are no more than like a minute's problem. Well, without distractions. With distractions, it could be 30 minutes, but uh, without distractions, it's, it's about a minute the problem. Matt, your challenge is to even do the homework. Good job. Don't don't uh, let me forget to collect that at the end. Oh, I mean, that's a perfect thing for a uh, for a uh, a high school level uh, pep rally slash you know historical thing and uh, go to our school. So we could you know we could have a thing on the Spanish Inquisition and we could have you know a demonstration of all the torture. No, all the yes. <laughs> we could have. We could do it on first graders. <laughs> no. No, we should get accepted. Like execute on person to everybody. You know, the things that are memorable in your life are well, they're there for a reason, right? So the easiest way to remember a lot of historical events is to, you know, make it memorable. We could torture your last uh, this year's ninth grade. Can we have our own sobriety? Your own what? Sobriety. What does that mean? That's college pep rally. Sorority. Because the word you used was not the word that was not the word that you used was not what you thought it meant. I just thought that would like sobriety means that you are not consuming alcohol. All right, right. That you are sober. Can we all be sober next year? Let's hope so. We use sober in every everyday speak as well too, like. Um, it just means you're clear-headed, you're, you're not under the influence of, of, of oh, anything. So Speaking of under the influence, could we demonstrate liver, like, liver <laughs> failure? <laughs> liver I failure? Yeah. What? All right, here we go. All right, up here, <laughs> graphing linear equations. I will do this. Uh, the first part I'll do uh, rather quickly, but the second part we'll do it nice and slow. Where we left off, we were talking about linear equations. These are equations that make lines. How do you identify a linear equation? The x values to the first power, okay? Uh, it makes lines. Uh, we had standard form. Remember that was ax plus by equals c. Uh, the technique we learned yesterday was that if it is in standard form, the easiest way to graph it is using the intercepts, okay? We take the intercepts. Uh, the second form is the slope intercept form. That's the one that you learned extensively last year uh, in algebra one, y equals mx plus b where M is the slope and B is the intercept. Last night for homework, you had these two things. They gave you one in standard form and eventually they gave you some in slope intercept form. If it's in standard form, the easiest way is to graph the intercepts. You let X be zero, solve for Y. You let Y be zero, solve for X. That gives you two points. They are the intercepts, play connect the dot. If it's in slope intercept form like this one, graph the Y intercept, apply the slope to it, okay? That's what you should do. We have a third and final that nobody likes now. It's called the table of values. Uh, both my algebra one and my pre algebra students right now literally are doing table of values. They don't like them. Uh, geometry, I'm sorry, not my geometry, my algebra one students are, are seeing that. Uh, what's left to do? Well, let's see, we've talked about all three of these lines where we graph the intercepts, but we haven't talked about that line right there, which is a diagonal line, but it goes through zero, zero. Therefore, guess how many intercepts you technically have? Three. How many intercepts do you technically have on a line that goes to the origin? We got one. I mean, really, you got two. I mean, it intercepts both the intersects both the x and the y axis. The problem is it intersects where the two uh, uh, axes intersect. So you only get one point if you try to graph the intercept. So that's a problem. Uh, and then we haven't talked about horizontal and vertical lines. So we'll talk about all three of these here on the bottom. What do you do? How do you graph them? 
So here's that first problem, right? It's diagonal, right? Uh, on any other diagonal line except this one, we get two intercepts. We get an X and a Y intercept, and there's unique points. Therefore, we can play connect the dots. On this particular one, well, it's written in standard form. It looks like this, and you're like, oh, well, let me do the intercepts. You let X be equal to zero, Y equal to zero. You let Y equal to zero, then X equal to zero. You get the same number. So if it is one of these, and you'll recognize it because it will look like this right here, right? If it looks like that right there, well, then don't do it. Use slope intercept form. So if we move the X to the other side, we get Y equals X. The slope is one, the Y intercept is zero. Now remember, it's gonna look like this in reality, but you can always add a plus zero. So um, if it looks like in standard form like that, we'll just change it to slope intercept form and graph it, okay? The other two that are left to do are your horizontal and your vertical line. So let's just, I mean, I, I well, I didn't, Miss Kittle did. Uh, I showed you this in pre-algebra. Uh, Miss Kittle showed it to you in uh, algebra one. All right, write this down, please, box one. Horizontal lines. Uh, those are, well, lines that are horizontal. Uh, you get a slope of zero on our horizontal lines. Why? Because the, well, there's no rise on it, but there is run, right? You pick any two points on the horizontal line, we can calculate a run but it never rises. So you get zero over some number, zero divided by any number is zero. You get a slope of zero and in slope intercept form, if you throw a zero in for M, well, zero times X is zero. So you're just left with Y equals B. So in slope intercept form, books should write it this way. They don't, guess the way they write it. A lot of complicated way. No, they write it instead of using the B, which they should, they put a K. But K what? for constant, okay? What? It's that constant. No. Uh, constant. They, so the K is for constant. Um, it should be a B, but no book writes it as Y equals B. They write it as Y equals K. So all horizontal lines, and this is a paradox. You think horizontal axis is the X axis. That's true. But all horizontal lines are the form Y equals K. It's opposite of what you would think. Why, why, pun intended, why? Because it, what is not changing is the Y value. Any point along this red line that's got the same Y value. So what is that Y value? Well, it's whatever number is attached here, the Y intercept, okay? Nobody complained about it last year, by the way. What? How dare they? They didn't even spell constant right. It's German. So it's with a K. Mm -hmm. All right. Why are we doing midterm? Uh, famous German mathematicians, that's why. Okay, vertical uh, lines are gonna be the opposite of horizontal lines. Well, we don't have run here, but we do have rise and that's a problem because you can't divide by zero. So we say for vertical lines, there is no slope or undefined slope more precise. So vertical lines have an undefined slope and that's a problem writing it in slope intercept form because slope intercept form includes the slope. So since it has no slope, we can't write a vertical line in slope intercept form. So it gets X equals not B, but X equals K. Remember vertical lines do not have a Y intercept at all. So maybe the reason why horizontal lines get Y equals K instead of B is they're trying to be nice to vertical lines because vertical lines don't even have the option of having a B. They have to get a K. So why got offended that X had a K? Maybe he was trying to be nice to his buddy. I don't oh. know. So like I said, the hardest thing for high schoolers is to understand this is a slight paradox. And the paradox is that vertical lines, you're thinking Y axis, should say Y equals. It doesn't. It says X equals that number, K. And horizontal lines you think should be the X axis. It's not. It gets Y equals. So it's just the opposite. That's how you keep a track in your head. It's the opposite of what you think. Tonight for homework, they're going to give you Y equals two or X equals three or Y equals negative one. When you see that first letter, just think opposite. Oh, X is horizontal. So this is a vertical line. How do you graph it? Whatever a number appears right here, you put on the X axis and draw a vertical line. How do you graph this one? Well, whatever number appears here, this K value, you put on the Y axis and draw a horizontal line. And that's how it's done. Okay, back to here. So the first thing they're gonna do, this is the first two questions tonight for homework. They're gonna give you this on the left side and this on the right side. They're gonna give you a bunch of equations. I don't know how many they give you. 
They're gonna say graph it. I think they give you two and they say graph it on the same graph or something like that. Uh, well, you just simply graph it. Hey, Ethan, is that a Y or an X? Now think the opposite of that. The opposite, the, 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 I shouldn't say the opposite, the, uh, the, the, it's buddy, right? X equals, right? And Y equals. You think that Y equals should go up and down. It's not, it goes horizontal. So that's a horizontal line, but you put a dot on the Y value too. So we put a dot on the Y value too, and we draw a horizontal line. There you go. So if this is horizontal, you think this is, so we put a dot on the X value, negative one, and we draw a vertical line. It's pretty simple, right? This is a vertical line. So we put an X or dot on the X value, negative three, and we draw a vertical line. The last one, Y equals zero. How am I gonna draw that? Is it vertical or horizontal? Y equals. So I put a dot on zero and draw, a it's the X axis. Y equals zero is the X axis. That's weird. So that's the first thing they'll have you do tonight for homework. The second thing, they will give you a picture and ask you to write the equation. All right, well, the equation, pick one. I don't care which one. Uh, the top red one right here. It's a horizontal line. It says horizontal lines will say, why is this red and blue? Why don't those be the same colors? That's weird. Okay, horizontal lines uh, say y equals. So I write y equals that value. I don't know if you can see. It's on your paper, by the way. Uh, it looks like three, so we get y equals three. Um, this blue line right here, it's, it's vertical, vertical, say X equals, uh, that looks to be about what, six or seven or five, right? There's all four of them right here. So X equals five, bottom one. I should have put these in a better order. I see Y equals negative two would be the other red line right here. And then the, uh, Y axis, you really want to write Y equals zero. It's not, it's the opposite. It's X equals zero. I gotta be careful with opposite because Ethan was right. Opposite has a specific math mean. We okay? All right, there's your first thing. Seems like we're done, but the rest of it, the, the majority of the homework is on solving a system of equations. Recall that if you have two lines and they're on the same plane, two lines on the same plane, the lines are either parallel or they intersect. There's a third thing that can happen. That's literally if the lines are literally the same. What we're asking you to do when we say solve a system of equations is asking you whether they intersect, are they parallel, or are they the same line? If they intersect, we ask you where do they intersect? And that's what you spend the majority of your, your, your time on, finding where they intersect. Okay. If they are parallel, there is no solution. They don't intersect. If they are the same line, well, they intersect everywhere, so they have infinite solutions. You remember doing this last year? Yeah. Okay. okay. We there's three ways of doing this. There's the well, the graphing method, including using your graphing calculator. Use this if both equations say y equals. Guess what happens tonight? None of them say that. We're not going to use that. The second technique you learned last year is called substitution. This is when one of the equations says y equals, guess what happens tonight? None of them say that. The third option, it was the last option that you learned, and I even asked Ms. Kittle, hey, what the kids think? And they're like, oh, we all like the third method. The third method is called elimination. Every, you guys admitted that you liked this last year. Uh, and it's where both equations are in standard form Guess what every problem is tonight? They're in standard form. So this is the technique you'll use to solve these ones. There's a bunch of steps. I'm gonna do one first, and you're gonna tell me, do you remember or not remember? The first step is if the equations are not stacked, that means one above the other, we we'll wouldn't stack them. Hey, you're gonna stack the X's above the X, the Y's above the Y's, the constants above the constants. This is how they actually write every problem tonight for homework. You yeah. see that, those yeah. with the books open? Okay. Do you remember the next technique or the next step? We make one of them the same, either the X or the Y, and that's why it's called elimination because we're going to eliminate one of them. So we either match up the X, we're talking about the coefficients, we either match these numbers up attached to X, or we match the Y numbers. Hey, look, Merry Christmas. Sorry, both the three, except one's negative, one's positive. 
That's a good thing. You want one to be negative and one to be positive. When the numbers are the same, except they're opposite signs, you add. When the numbers are the same, guess what you do? You subtract. Do you remember that? Okay, so are the numbers the same or opposite? If they're the, they're opposite. When they're opposite, we add. So we're just going to add those two. Okay, remember if they're the same, we're going to subtract. What's three minus three? Eliminated itself. That's why it's called elimination. Add. Add. Well, he's already jumping way ahead. Yes. Okay, I'll catch up with you. So he's saying, oh, it's negative two. Do you see that? That's what y is. You just found where the two lines intersect. You just found where the y value is. Now I got to find the x value. Do you remember what you do? We could. We suggest now you could literally do that. We suggest you just do a substitution. That you're going to take this value, you go back to either equation, doesn't matter. You pick one. Make your life easy, pick the easiest one to do. Channel, which one are we going to pick? Top one or bottom? Why the bottom one, not the top one? Why is it easier? There's smaller numbers and there's fewer negatives. Remember, negatives are one that causes all these problems. So you can choose either one. It doesn't matter, right? You can choose that one or that one. I'm going to choose the red one and rewrite it. And I'm going to let y be negative 2. So I erase my y. I put a negative 2 in parentheses, and I go to town. Two negatives. Subtract 8. Not 3. So therefore, x equals. It looks like we're done, except they want you to remember what we're looking for. We're trying to find where the two lines intersect. So it's a point, and well, in yellow, whatever that color is, there's the point, x, y. So write your answer as x, y. Do you remember doing that? OK. One more time. Stack the numbers. You're trying to make these numbers the same. Hey, look, they're the same. If the signs are literally the same, you subtract. If the signs are opposite, you add. Are we going to add or subtract here? And that's the one that will kick your butt. So addition, everybody gets. So subtraction, people mess up all the time. Do you remember what we have to do if we decide we need to subtract? I'm going to change all the signs of the second one. Meaning I'm going to change. And the reason why is because remember that a, a subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So yeah, I want to subtract these two. So we, we got to change all of the signs. Subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. What's the opposite? What's the opposite? What's the opposite? That's what you're going to add. It is, and it's messy. So I'm going to add those now. The x's go away. This turns into 9y equals 18. Therefore, y is. What's the next step? Which one you want, top or bottom? Okay, let's use the top one. That gives me a six. Subtract, that gives me no. No. Subtract, that gives me subtract and then not multiply, but divide, that gives me a two. Hey, look, it's the same thing, two, two. What do you know? Who's lost? Connor, you remember doing this? Okay. Yeah. Valerie and Tutu. Okay. Hey, they're not going to give you one like this, but if they give you side by side, you got to staff them. Stop. Right. So I staff them. Ah. What? None of the numbers are the same. So what do we do? Ah. What did you eat for breakfast? Do that again. All right. What do we do? Which one you want to multiply? Why did that just pop up now? Why are you so stupid today? I didn't. I absolutely didn't say that. I said the opposite. If you multiply, so you want to match the x's or the y's? So let's match the y's. Where are we going to multiply? The bottom, everything in the bottom by. 
Well, we like when one's positive and one's negative because then we add. We could by negative three, but let's keep one positive one. It just make we'll save ourselves a step, right? So we're gonna multiply the bottom by everything, though, not just one or two things. Everything. This by three, that by th the whole darn thing by three. That's gonna give me. That's gonna give me a uh, big number, fifty-one. So it did. Now notice. We got opposite. We like the other. If we had multiplied by the negative three, then we had to change all the signs. It's just an extra step. Okay, add. What do we get? Nineteen x. Ooh, that sounds horrible. Nineteen x equals nineteen. Oh, that's nice. So therefore, x equals. Which one you want to substitute into? Doesn't really make a difference. You'll get the same answer. First one, all right, let's use the first one. So we're gonna let X be the value one. That gives me a negative two. Add two, that gives me negative 30. Therefore, Y equals, so therefore what's the final answer? One, negative two, okay? Yes, everybody. Uh, there was one that you had. It was not the most difficult one. It's the one where you can't just multiply one equation. You got to multiply both equations. What time do we get out of here? 55? 40. I don't want to run out of time. All right. I'm going to skip this one and go to, go to the one where we're multiplying both equations because you guys have good recall on this. I was surprised. I thought I was going to have to spend more time on this, but you guys have very good recall. How about, no, I think it's the last one. No. Is there an eight? Yeah, here we go. Okay. Matt, look at that. Is there an easy thing we can multiply to match the numbers? Like, I can just multiply the bottom by three and I've matched things. So guess what we have to do for this one? Pain. What's the pain? We have to actually solve the equations. Well, we've done that for everyone. What's our goal here in elimination? We want to multiply the top numbers. We would like to match either the x's or the y's. Yes. There's no easy way of matching the x's to the y's just by multiplying one equation by a number. So guess what we have to do? Okay. Ethan's already said it. Say again. Not by the same number, by big different numbers. So do you want to match the X's or the Y's? And if, it's, if we match the X's, what are you going to multiply your top by? Four. Okay, so you're going to multiply the top by four. What are you going to multiply the bottom by? Three. Now, I'm going to say the same thing I said to Ethan, which is that's true, but we would like to save ourselves as much work as possible. Try to have one positive and one negative. We multiply that by three, great. Then we got to change all the signs negative by negative three. And it could have been top, top by negative four, the bottom by positive three. I don't know if this is what I chose. Is this what I chose? No, I chose a different way, but let's use Matt's way. All right, Matt, what are we going to get? Uh, we're going to get 12x plus 2y equals one. Plus. Oh, sorry. Plus 8y yep. equals one. Equals. Eight. Equals. What? Oh, four. How many mistakes are you allowed in one problem? That's three. All right, keep going. And then we're going to get negative 12x plus 9y. There's negative, four. Negative 9y equals positive 6. Now what? Well, the 12s cancel. Okay. Just add. I don't like adding. Um, it doesn't like you either, but that's okay. I know. <laughs> so it's just going to be negative 12 plus 9. Negative 1. Negative 2. We're adding. Oh, equals 10. So therefore, y is equal to? There's 5. There's 5 mistakes, and we're halfway there. I'm just saying. Is this 
Is this technique under easily understandable? Sure, everybody understands it. Are you going to make mistakes on it? You make five mistakes and one and half the problem. It's that's what happens. And when you make that one mistake, guess what happens to everything? Boy, does it go bad. It goes really bad. And I get answers of negative 117 over 156. And then I'm like, what? So be, just be, and it is easy to make mistakes. Okay. Um, and then you substitute that into either one of the equations away you go. So for the online learners who didn't get to see what I just wrote on the board, I'm going to match the Y's not because it's a better choice. It's just a different choice. Uh, I'm going to make them uh, into six and negative six. Then add. And then throw that back into either equation and then solve for y. And there we go. Notice we got negative 10, just like you got on your as well, too. So uh, 7, negative 10 is the answer. Last, 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 last thing. I won't do this one. You guys understand this. You guys are doing well. Uh, the last thing is that remember, some weird things can happen for system equations. They give you two parallel lines. When you do this process, you won't get an answer. You'll get something silly. Wait, you're exactly the same. Agreed. But sometimes you don't even realize that. If you can tell right from the very start that they're the same equation, just one's a scalar of the other, well, you're ahead of the game. You can say, wait, that's the same equation, infinite solutions. But if you don't, you're like, okay, let's match something. All right, I'll match the X's. And then I'll add and I'll let, when I get zero equals, you'll literally get zero equals zero. Well, that's a true statement. But all the variables dropped out. This is infinite. This is what it will look like. Infinite solutions. Okay. But you could have parallel lines. What will that look like? This one's a little bit harder to tell that they're parallel. Not really. Well, how do you know they're parallel? Actually, seven and negative two, yeah. Yeah, but how do you know they're parallel? So four is double two. And two is double one. Yeah, but negative two isn't double seven. Yeah, no, it's not. That's so. what I'm saying. It, it's hard to tell. Okay. Um, so let's match the y's. We match the y's. When we add them, all the variables drop out. We get a nonsensical. Zero doesn't equal zero. It says zero equals negative 16. This is what will happen when you have parallel lines. You have parallel lines, there's no solution. So if you realize, go ahead. And, and remember, where does the slope come from when, uh, when it's in the form of y equals mx plus b? What's it attached to? It's attached to the x. So sometimes you can tell, hey, look, the problem is that you, it, you really got to think it through. But yeah, you can right from the very start. Can you make this be in degree mode? I'm sure I could, but not off the top of my okay, head. That's fine. I can wait. It's a Casio. Matt's got a Casio. This is why we tell everyone to buy a TI-84 because there's so many calculators we can't memorize all the, the keystrokes for. All right, any questions? Uh, there are what, six of these and then there's two of the vertical horizontal line ones. So it's not that much, it should be fine. I'm impressed, you guys did wonderful on that. Uh, I mean, recall. I do want your homework though. Yeah, homework, two minutes to go. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, my word. How to turn this all work? Nice. And Ethan did, and Mike did, and Chandler did. This is just the same. I left my phone here. So. Florida kind of did. I went in Chris the always turned on the board. He's still turning on the board. And Wes has yeah, no. become lazy as a late. I guess there are no few. Wes has always been lazy. Hey, who's not going to college? I might now. Right here. I mean, like, you're, you're sure you're positive? Yes. Hundred percent. Yeah. Chandler is. Depends if I can get into art school. You'll be able to get into art. Yeah. Get into Hitler or something. Like if you give him like a check, it's probably like my guy. I love. Ethan, what's your current plans? What do you want to do? I don't know. I just want to show my shit. I did it. I did it. And that's what that's what turned me into who I am today. Is you know I decided to. I mean, I eventually went to college, but I wasn't ready for it right out of high school. That's what that's what my dad did. Like he enlisted and then. He went OCS or something? Or? No, like he retired and then he went into a like like this. Right, 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 right. <laughs> no harm, no harm.
Yeah. Connor, you figure out what you want to do yet? You're about, I mean, you're like, what, two weeks away, two and a half weeks away from being juniors in high school? What? I remember Matt throwing mayonnaise package at people when he was in eighth grade. I remember when he was just a mess in eighth grade. Like, all the mess came from him. And he, he, would, he would be so, oh, he, he couldn't even remember to eat his lunch. <laughs> Matt, we're talking about you. Don't realize. Okay. <laughs> Matt would literally, the bell would ring, and I would look at Matt. I was like, Matt, you didn't eat your lunch. Because he was too busy, like, messing with time. Throwing mayonnaise and mustard. That was Tyler. That was Tyler. Yeah. I remember Micah being, like, perfect for my knockout. And then Micah asking, Mr. C, can I run around the building 46 times? <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. Those were good times. Have a good weekend. See you on Monday.